So now to the latest on the housing market. Did you know that more Americans signed contracts to buy homes in August, which means that the U.S. housing market is expected to continue its record season well into fall? So what does this mean if you're considering selling or buying a home? I mean, we see the unemployment numbers Diane just talked about. Yeah. She talked about 837,000 people um, still filed for unemployment. Also, American Airlines saying that more than 20,000 people American Airlines, United Airlines, right. uh, they're going to be furloughed. Then we're talking about Disney. Disney talking Another about 30,000 30, right? people. So, you know, people are still buying homes, and it's kind of like not making sense yeah. because they're buying homes all across the nation, including right here in San Diego. So we want to check in with Matt Battietta with the Battietta Real Estate Group. He's joining us to give us a better gauge of the San Diego market right now. And despite the uh, double-digit unemployment we have here in the, in the county, Matt, uh, the, the, the houses are just flying off the market here still, right? I mean, explain how this is possible. You know, who would have who would have guessed a global pandemic would make everyone who went out and buy houses? Right. Happen. Yeah. So, you know, right now we've got obviously really low interest rates. We've got uh, our inventory in San Diego County is less than half of what it normally is. Mm. So we've got less than 50,000 homes on the market, which sounds like a lot. But just back, for example, in 2018, we had about 110,000. Wow. So very, very low inventory. Um, we've also got a really interesting phenomenon, which is we've, we're starting to see a lot of people moving to San Diego from places like the San Francisco Bay Area, um, from New York City, for example, from Seattle. And these are all, a lot of these people are tech workers who are able to work remotely, and they're deciding to move to San Diego for the same reason we all did, because it's a great place to live. So all those things are combining to make the market really, really strong at the moment. I, I've heard reports where those folks are coming in here and you can afford um, a lot more home here than you can say in the Bay Area. Right. They come in and they outbid everyone and that drives the prices up. Is, is that something that you're seeing happen? Yeah, that, to a degree. I mean, they're pretty savvy buyers and so they're looking at the comps and so forth. You know, they don't, they don't want to overpay, but um, it's, you know, I'll tell you, I noticed it back in April. April and May, after about the fifth or sixth person called me on one of on one of my listings and I and told me that they were from Palo Alto or mm -hmm. Los Altos sure. or San Francisco, and I I said, "What's going on? <laughs> You're like the sixth person that's called me from San Francisco," and they all said, "Well, we can work remotely," and and our companies said we're going to be working remotely probably for a long time and maybe forever mm -hmm. and. So we'd rather live here. Yeah. So, I, you know, we're looking for a home and we got the same word from our real estate agent who said the same thing. You know, I have a question for you. Um, it, you, it feels very, uh, you go in to look at a home and there's like 10 people out there, you get outbid, you feel defeated, right? Um, mm. What do you think is going to happen heading into 2021? Do you think these, these home prices are still going to stay where they are? Do you think they're going to come down? When we hear about those unemployment numbers, we hear about all yep. those companies furloughing mm -hmm. people. Like, do you think it's going to level out at some point or go down? Yeah, it it, we always go in cycles in San Diego. Um, you know, low interest rates are always, uh, it's like putting fuel on the fire. It always, if you can, you can buy so much more for your money. Um, you know, we always go in cycles. Um, we're definitely at a peak. I mean, our, the bottom of this market, basically when this recovery started was 2012. It's now 2020, so we're, we're on a, that's a really long run up. Mm -hmm. um, but I have to say that, that again, people moving in, COVID has screwed everything up. You know, normally, Normally, May and June, um, in March and April, rather, are our busiest months of the year. Everything is off kilter sure. right now. And, right. and also, I'll say that with all these people moving here from, I mean, we used to never get people literally relocating here from New York City. Right. Yeah, I mean, that's a long way to go. Or San Francisco, you know, <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, here and there, but not like this level. So, you know, we, it, it goes in cycles. What I would tell you is if you're buying a house because you want to live in it for the long term, I think you're fine. If you're a flipper, you got to be really careful. Sure. Sure. Uh, real quick, only about 30 seconds left here, Matt. But um, when, when people are going out and looking, that has also changed, right? Are they still able to go in homes with all the regulations and everything? How does that look? Yeah, you know, the only, the only good thing that's really come out of this pandemic, in my view, is that it's pushed the real estate industry to go in a direction it was already going in, which is to do everything almost completely virtually. So we do 3D walkthrough videos. We get really good photos. We get aerial shots. And we can, you can really almost buy a house without even stepping into mm -hmm. it. What we do is we build an interest list. And then we basically open the house up for one day of showing. And uh, that way it's much less of an inconvenience on the seller. 
And for a buyer, you know, once they're really interested, we've seen their loan pre-approval, their proof of funds, they've seen the videos, et cetera, we can walk them through the house and then they can make an offer. And if you are a buyer out there and you're looking to buy something, you shouldn't be too daunted by how competitive it is. If you have a good agent, you can still get the house that you want. Okay, let me ask you one more thing. If you're a first-time home buyer, should you hold off and the prices will go down? I know real estate agents don't want to, you know, say, don't buy, yeah. don't buy, because you want to sell, right? But realistically, yeah. I, mean, it, I mean, the prices are way up, like 10%, 20% in some places are higher. Yeah, it's tough to time the market, but, um, yeah, you could, you could wait for a dip. I mean, it, it, our market does go up and down. It's just very hard to gauge when it's going to happen. Yeah, right, right. It's just such an interesting time, Matt. Thank and, you and so much. And the other much. problem is rents are ridiculously high. They are. I know. So yep. Even though prices are high, it's really probably with, with the tax write-offs, it's cheaper to own than it is to rent. I've got I've got clients paying six, seven, eight thousand dollars a month oh. in rent. Ah, wow. That hurts. Yeah, that's definitely better to buy in that scenario. Yeah. Wow. All right, Matt. Thank you so much for talking thank to us. Thank I guess you. we just have to wait and see, right? Yeah. Thanks, Matt. Appreciate your time.